Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TG World 2019. Thank you so much for being here. If you're watching YouTube, don't forget to leave a like, it really helps out the channel. If you're live with me on Twitch, thank you so much for joining me today. So, um, <clears throat> we've already reviewed <laughs> the Sapdos deck that won, the Zorak Lucario deck that got second place. And so we are now going to be taking a look at one of the top placing, um, Pikachu and Zekrom GX decks that um, <clears throat> that did well at the tournament. Jose Marrero's list from top four. He's been having a pretty good season, uh, making day twos all over. And I love Nickers. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, it's really cool to see that, or it's really. I think Jose is the best example of how Pokemon uh, can be very luck based. Sometimes he's been to five different Mexico CD tournaments. Or Mexico tournaments and he has gotten zero championship points at all of them yeah he's zero out of five in getting championship points when in Mexico but then two weekends later he just goes on to make uh, top four at the international and arguably much harder tournament so very interesting how Pokemon works and how variance definitely takes a toll on everyone and so we have Pikachu and Zekrom a really powerful lightning type deck 240 HP, full blitz for three lightning energy. We get to deal 150 damage and then we search our deck for up to three lightning energy cards and attach them to one of our Pokemon. So a really nice way to power up another Pikachu and Zekrom um, and also power ourselves up to use Tackball GX where we deal 200 damage. And if this Pokemon has at least three extra lightning energy attached to it, this attack does 170 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So enough to one kill a Lele, but also enough to one kill a lot of non-GXs. So usually with Tack Ball GX, you're going to be getting at least two, probably three, sometimes four, sometimes five, sometimes even six prizes, depending on if you're playing a mirror match and how the game ends up playing out. So Tack Ball GX, a really powerful attack. Fighting weakness does mean that uh, Lucario is a really big threat for Pikachu and Zekrom, and so is Baby Buzzwall in the Sledgehammer turn. Triple Retreat Gust is quite heavy, but it is um, outweighed or it is uh, nullified by the fact that we have double Zero Hour GX with its ability Thunderclap Zone. Each of your Pokemon that has any Lightning Energy attached to it has no Retreat Cost, so really nice feature right there. Zero Hour mostly a support Pokemon, but Plasma Fist is a pretty good attack, dealing 160 damage for 3 energy, and even though Zero Hour gets attacked next turn, a simple switch or goose or escape rope would fix that because Zorara would go back to the bench and then the free treat option just makes it super super easy for Zorara to get back to back attacks. Full voltage GX, um, we get to attach 5 basic energy cards from the discard pile to our Pokemon in any way we like. However, obviously Pikachu's and Zekrom's GX attack is going to be the preferred attack of choice. Now for support we have a Coco GX, 170 HP. Ability Aero Trail, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may move any number of Lightning Energy from other Pokemon to this Pokemon, and if you do, you can make this Pokemon your active. And then Sky High Claws for 3 energy deals 130 damage, so all of the attacks are very powerful, but Tabu Thunder GX is definitely another GX attack worth considering using over Pikachu's and Zekrom's because it deals 50 damage for each energy that your opponent has in play. And so it is definitely a great way to combat the mirror matches too. Um, we have Kogo Prism Star with its ability Dance of the Ancients, where if it's on the bench, you get to choose two Pokemon on your bench as well. And then you attach a Lightning Energy to each of them. And I hate Nickers, <laughs> thank you so much for the follow. Um, so that's Energy Acceleration right there. And we have six ways to move energy around. So Kogo Prism Star is basically an extra two attachments at any point. Um, same for the Rayquaza GX, we have no wat uh, water, eh? <laughs> grass energy in the deck, but we do have um, a lot of ways to move the energy around. So Rayquaza GX's purpose is to act like another Coco Prism Star, I guess. You you use Stormy Winds, you discard three cards, and then you attach a Lightning from your discard ball onto Rayquaza, and then you move it somewhere else. That's Rayquaza GX's only purpose here, because we don't have any grass energy to use Dragon Break or Tempest GX. Now we have Marshadow GX as a fighting type attacker, really good for the mirror match, really good against Zorark because Shadow Hunt can copy all of the attacks. 
that we have in the deck from our basic Pokemon. And because we do have six ways to move energy around, it's not very difficult to power up. And then support wise, we have the Absol to increase our um, opponent's basic Pokemon retreat cost by one, therefore count trying to counter um, Zapdos Jirachi decks by making it harder for Jirachis to retreat. Single Oranguru for draw, along with double Marshall for let loose and Tapu Lele to grab a supporter. Now, supporters wise, we have a very thin three Lily, three Cynthia, and one Ericas. This, I think, is the biggest weakness of the deck. I am not a big fan of having so few item cards, I mean supporter cards. I would be okay with having four Lily, four Cynthia with the four Acrobike and one Ericas, perhaps, but three, three, one feels super, super greedy. But hey, it worked. It definitely worked at the tournament. Um, triple Kuzma as well, and then items wise, we have four Ultra Ball, four Acrobike, a single Nest Ball, a single Mysterious Treasure, which can search for Lele, Marshadow, or Rayquaza, and it also is another way to get Lightning Energy into a Discard Ball. Then we have four Electro Bar to increase our damage output. We have four Energy Switch, where we move a basic energy from one of our Pokemon to another. And then we have two Multi Switch, which moves energy from a Pokemon to the active Pokemon. So six total energy moving cards. Double Choice Band to increase our damage output as well with the Electro Powers. Thunder Mountain to decrease the attack cost of our Pokemon. And finally, Wondrous Labyrinth to increase the attack cost of our Pokemon. But because we get some energy into play, thanks to Full Blitz, it's actually not that big a deal. And so, let's jump into a ladder, try out the Pikachu and Zekrom deck and see how well we can do with this 4th place Oceana deck. So, bright immediately right off the bat it seems like we're up against um zorak lucario based on the typings that i saw um i would assume this is zorak lucario with mog lele ditto prison star etc we get a friendly hello so we'll send a hello back uh, we don't have the greatest hand not the worst not the best we'll see what we can do with this um did this win no this is did this not win mario Zapdos won this got top four so yeah there we see the alolan grimer um interesting decision to use the psychic one rather than the new dark type one which can ko a jirachi on turn one right if the jirachi stays asleep but it is in fact zork with presumably lucario or at the very least like a rock so we shall see what happens here. Discarding Lycanroc and Palpan. Discarding Lycanroc and Palpan. There's their Riolu. So yeah, my opponent immediately recognizes that he's playing against Pikachu and Zekrom, so we'll go ahead and prepare the Riolu whilst also getting a very nice Lily for 7, so a very nice starting hand for my opponent. If he was playing against Zapdos, then um, starting the Grimer would be very sad, and this Nest Ball would definitely be directed into a Ditto Prism Star, right, to make sure he has the Mug, which it could be the same decision. It ends up not being quite that decision. Um, we could see a Pokemon Communication now for the Ditto. Um, because Ditto, like if my opponent sets up a Lolan Mog, then that completely gets rid of my Tapu Koko Prism Star option, so that would be very detrimental. Now he does go for a second Riolu, which means um, even if I got a turn 1 KO on the Riolu, that would still be pretty terrible. And yeah, my opponent had, to say my opponent had a solid start would be an understatement. So off of the Acrobike. I think I'm just gonna grab the energy switch and then we'll play another acrobike. I do find a lily that's the second choice man that's now gone and my hand is generally not very good. My hand is generally just not very good to the point where I am going to go ahead and find myself a Pikachu and Zacrum here. If my opponent has Lucario Guzma then so be it. There's nothing I can do to stop that. And okay so I do find energies, right? And I think it's just a pass here. This is a really awful hand. We don't have a good follow up. We have Lily, which is horrible when you have a lot of unplayable cards in your hand. And thank you so much for the follow, Destiny Joe. We see Zork. 
scanning a vault immediately, of course. If I had, yeah, this, I can see how Zorg Lucario just completely runs over it like a, a pure Pikachu and Zekrom focus deck. Um, wow, my opponent even got rid of a Kuzma here <laughs> to find a Lucario. So clearly he has another Lucario. I mean, another Kuzma. So very nice, very nice for my opponent. Going first makes such a big difference. My very slow start also makes a big, big difference. And to say we're in trouble would be an understatement. So I can use Coco Prison Star, I can power up once again, but it's just not looking very good here. So I get a Cynthia off. Um, I can grab a Ray here. And then use the ray. <laughs> I just discard do discarded double electro power, and I've already lost my two choice band, so I can't even get a one hit on Lucario with full blitz. It's going to have to be through. Um... Yeah, I'm done here. There's absolutely no way to recover. I should use this guy though before he evolves into Mock, and I'm done. And yeah, I'll just pass. I mean, I'm gonna try, but we're in an awful position. How does one electro charge in an all electro power list sounds? It sounds terrible, the, beard, the bearded Bowser, because it's a flipping card and it doesn't even put them back into your hand. So definitely not a good, a good card, to be honest. I don't like electro charger at all in any sort of deck. If it was guaranteed, put one back into the deck, then I would like it. But if it's two flips, chance at zero electro, electro power is going back. It's a dead card, early game. It's like, I, I don't like electro charger at all. And I don't think it's a coincidence that there were a, a big number of um, electro powers being played. There were a big number of electro powers being played. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Um, thank you so much, Faden, for the follow. There was a big number of electro powers being played in Oceana, and not a single deck had electro charger. It's just playing flipping cards on purpose is just horrible. The effect has to be completely broken for you to risk the flips. Okay, so my opponent needs another energy to beat me. Right? That's all my opponent needs. Uh, yeah. That's all my opponent needs. So... I'm just gonna... I can't even get a knockout. <laughs> this is so bad. My opponent's turn 1 was crazy. My opponent's turn 2 was crazy. My opponent's turn 3 was pretty good. And our start was just abysmal. Yeah, exactly. For Electro Charger to be actually used, it would have to be either flip to put into hand or uh, guaranteed to put back into the deck. The fact that it's a flip to put back into the deck, that is awful. Like, you play you play flipping cards like Crushing Hammers and Super Scoop Up because the effects are so broken that it works out. Yeah? What? Was that Tord? Oh, that was Tord. And I guess he didn't want to reveal his deck. So he chose not to play. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Yimis, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for the, <clears throat> for the, for the nice comments, um, it's considerably lower than other videos on watch. And when, it, when an advertisement comes on, it blows out my ear speakers because yours is so slow. You're great otherwise. Um, thank you. I don't know 
why that is i have no modification on my microphone and like my microphone i have it right here in front of me it's less than five centimeters away um, i have heard that from different people but if i increase the volume of my microphone then well that this is a, a silly hint <laughs> um if i increase the volume of my um of my microphone then it the the voice starts getting distorted yeah so i don't i thank you for the feedback i will look into it but when i listen to my videos they honestly sound okay like i've had this feedback many times before and when i listen to them i've i've um they've sounded okay so i don't know what to tell you okay so definitely gonna grab not much at all lately i have a chance thanks to the double multi switch or double energy switch rather i have a chance to get a turn one attack off if i do i probably just win immediately my opponent didn't use energy evolution either because of a misclick or because um yikes Oh my gosh. Everyone didn't. Hmm. I needed one Ultra Ball. I needed two. Well, I needed two Nest Balls rather, or one Ultra Ball. Mysterious Treasure. Mysterious Treasure does put another energy into play, but. This is terrible. Um. I think I'm just gonna have to transfer the energy back. Right? This sucked, but there's nothing I can do. So I don't mind playing this Wondrous Labyrinth, honestly. Try and slow down my opponent's attacks. Um, so yeah, when I, when I listen to my own videos, they sound normal, so I don't know what to tell you. Um... Tord must have a secret deck. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Grass Psychic making a splash during Collinsville. The meta twice removed. What do you mean the meta twice removed? And how would Grass Psychic deal with Lightning decks? The meta twice removed. I don't get what that means. Shotgun Nostrils. Lost March is Grass Psychic. Yeah, but it just co gets completely demolished by Sapdos and by Ultra Necrozma. So Lost March is not a good play. Lost March is absolutely not a good play. Okay, so my opponent does in fact remove the stadium, so that's pretty good. Because instead of him, well, he attached energy to the Mr. Mind for whatever reason. Um, he does choose to use the GX attack. The thing is, Shotgun Nostrils, Sapdos is not weak to fighting. Sapdos wrecks fighting decks and it will wreck Grass and Psychic. So it's not as simple as, oh, your deck is weak, therefore I win. It's like, Pokemon doesn't work like that. Pokemon definitely doesn't work like that. Okay, so I think I'm okay getting rid of one of these. And... I'm not going to grab the ray. Yeah, I think I just pass here. I mean, I could have used full voltage. I definitely don't want to. Um. Yeah, no, I, I disagree. I don't think grass psychic is a good combination. It's not as simple as fighting beats lightning and there because the lightning decks the big lightning decks are Sapdos, not um the big lightning decks the big lightning deck or the biggest one will probably be Sapdos, not pikachu and zekrom and Sapdos is weak to lightning so i don't know okay so my opponent is really struggling here this top deck is very nice and then double electro power. 
does mean I get a kill with full blitz and I get to power up the bench friend. So there's the extra Pokemon. I will full blitz and Gekuga, I can show the list after the match. Uh, but it's already on Limitless. It's literally the exact same list as the fourth place Jose Marrero, in case you wanna check it out. Um, I don't know, Zapdos won the event past a two, a two ace or Ola playing Zorg, so Mr. Mime is fancy, but it's like, think about this. Which deck plays ace or Ola? Zorg. Zorg is already going to play Alolan Mok, which stops Mr. Mime, and they're gonna now be playing possibly a heavier line of Alolan Mok, so having Mr. Mime to block an ace or Ola because it's a counter to Zapdos, which it isn't because Sabdo still won against an Acerola Zorak deck, which will now run a bigger line of Mog to counter Sabdos, which then stops Mr. Mime. So there's, I disagree. There's not that much of a merit to the Mr. Mime, honestly. Okay, so the attachment onto Mr. Mime now makes more sense because my opponent is probably playing, um, Probably playing Coco GX with the Coco Prism Star. He will get an attack off here. It's fine. We still have our own Thunder Mountain for a counter stadium. The extra damage counters aren't that big a deal. And here, what we can do is Guzma and double KO the two Jirachis or KO Sapdos and Mr. Mime to eliminate all energy in the deck right now. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. They Swift run GX on the first turn. So they couldn't have used Swift run GX again, the bearded Bowser. Um, I will Nest Ball for Absol to make it even harder for them to retreat and or attack. Now I'm gonna go ahead and Tack Bolt, KO the Mr. Mime and KO the Sapdos. And there's one prize energy switch, which is decent. And there's my other prize, which is Acrobatic. And I fancy my chances with two Pikachu, with a Pikachu and Zekrom at almost full health versus two Jirachis and a two card hand. Wob is decent, but they just play a Grimer now too. Yeah, every Zoric list should now be playing at least one Grimer. Yeah. I mean, if you can get Wolf it out and then stop and KO the Grimer, then that's fine. But the thing is, they can Guzma the Wolf it. The Wolf it all, the Wolf it's ability only works if it's on the bench. So if they Guzma bring up the Mr. Mime, then they are free to evolve into the Alolan Mock. And then that's going to be very annoying. So I think the, the point of this is just build your decks to be consistent. That's all there is to it. Build your decks to be consistent. And that's all you need to do. Yeah, it's like over teching. There's no perfect tech. There's no one card that you can add to your deck that will fix any given matchup. So it's all about um, playing a consistent deck that can do the same over and over as many times as you can. Like, and it's just a, it's as simple as take a look at the first place deck from Oceana. The deck is super consistent. It plays four copies of almost everything. If it plays a, a one-off copy of something, it's something that they can directly search for. Um, so that's the most important thing. We can go back and forth all day about which text to use, which texts are more effective, etc. But in reality, consistency is king. Consistency is what wins you tournaments. Okay, so I will counter this and I'll bench this guy. I will attach, I will energy switch from this guy to this guy. And then I will Guzma and KO a Sapdos with the brand new Pikachu and Zekrom. And we should be good here. We should be good. I'm gonna leave one energy in the deck just in case. Free coaching, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think the Buzzle version of Saptos is better or just a winning list? I think I really like the Buzzle version of Saptos, and it's also the next deck I'm gonna show after this Pikachu and Zekrom. Um, 
I do like it because it has more options against Orc. It has the Zebstrika as defense against Smog, and it has the Baby Buzzle and Hilego, both of which can get one KOs out of the blue. So I do like that version a little bit more against the general field, though it's probably less good because it's less straightforward than the other version in the mirror match. Yeah, it's definitely less consistent. It has three less supporters that can possibly draw you cards. So that's the biggest deal. Okay, so my opponent really wanted to get at least a knockout here um, on a Pikachu Zekrom, other than the one he got uh, on turn two, I believe. So this is going to be it for my opponent. Pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so as you can see, Pikachu and Zekrom is pretty powerful when it gets um, set up when you're not when it's not getting one shot, but against Lucario. It can be a very, very difficult matchup purely because of the power that is in a one to kill for a single energy and where you immediately lose half the game after your Pokemon goes down. So that's going to be it for Pikachu and Zekrom. I have another video on YouTube for Pikachu and Zekrom um, that I did on day one in case you want to see the deck more in action. It's a different list, but basically the same concept. And now we are going to be moving on to the next deck, which is Saptos, Boswell, Nihilego, which got fifth place at the Oceana tournament. So don't go anywhere, guys. I will be right back in just a second. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. Be right back, guys.